All right, you already know what it is, fourth quarter boy sports. It is me, the illustrious one, Professor Lake, in the building, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Be a fourth quarter boy for life. Hit that notification icon for me, dog. Get notified every time I flip a video out, man. So today we're going to talk about uh, free agency. It's been going on, guys. Things have been happening. The Bears have made some moves. And, you know, considering that, that Poles was talking about, you know, waiting till the second wave to make a lot of signings, he did make a lot of movement in the first wave. But I think he got some guys uh, off the board, uh, free agent-wise, that probably normally would have slipped, slipped to the second wave, you know. But with that in mind, we're going to give out some grades. We're going to talk about a few other things. Uh, just, you know, general discussion today about some of the things I've been thinking about in regards to the Bears' moves this offseason. So we're going to start out with Justin Jones. Uh, he's a guy that I told you guys before. Uh, I was looking at Bradley Chubb tape, and I was just wondering about these two interior linemen that were just like rolling over guards and centers and, you know, uh, just demanding a whole lot of double team action, you know. And I would see like Bradley Chubb, you know, get a lot of one-on-ones. And, you know, as an ex-defensive lineman, I definitely noticed that. I know that um, in order for your defensive ends to get off in a 4-3 scheme, you have to have some interior linemen that could uh, eat these double teams up and still get after the quarterback, still get in the backfield. It's all about penetration in a 4-3 and uh, gap control, gap integrity, and things like that. And I noticed that with Justin Jones and the other guy was B.J. Hill. And, I, and, you know, I didn't know that um, that Justin Jones was even drafted, to be honest with you. You know, I didn't know he was drafted. I thought he should have been drafted earlier in uh, earlier in the draft. You know, that's that was what my uh, my assessment was. But he wasn't. I think he was a later round pick uh, if he got drafted at all. But with that in mind, I know where he comes from. I know the type of ball player he can be and, and, and what he once was, and I think he'll be getting back to that in this scheme with um, Matt Eberflus, the 4-3. Um, he'll be a, a nice three technique. He's a bigger guy, uh, pretty tall, so you know he can get his hands in the air and bat down some balls. Uh, you know that he will definitely eat up some double teams. You're not going to be able to, to block him with one guy. You're going to have to double team him, most definitely. Now, um, you know, going right along, I gave that a B minus, you know, only because, you know, I think that Larry Ogan Joby, um, you know, the fact that they didn't go for Justin Jones to begin with, uh, I just kind of look at it like the whole uh, decision making process that ended up getting Justin Jones. I uh, was a little bit flawed. You know, that should have been a guy you might have wanted to go after. And, um, for the, the economics of it, I just think it would have been more feasible anyway if Ogan Joby was looking for the big payoff. And uh, we'll get to Ogan Joby because even though he's not on our team, it's definitely something that was involved with our um, with our free agency story this offseason. But moving along, we'll talk about Lucas Patrick. I gave that a B plus because I, I feel like the offensive line is an area of severe need. We need as many bodies on the offensive line as we could get so we could... Um, Pick out some of the best five. Pick out a starting lineup, you know. Uh, I, I still like the rookies, Borum uh, and, and Tevin Jenkins. I think they have a lot of potential. It's unfortunate that they were on Matt Nagy, Matt Nagy's offense and, and in my opinion, poorly coached. Uh, situation mishandled, you know. If you knew the guy had a back surgery and uh, you might have wanted to get that checked out early on in the game, you know. And that could have been something that you discussed with your uh, medical team and the doctors that the Bears hired. I just, something about how that played out just didn't sit right with me. I looked at a situation where you were going to have to get surgery. Um, it's something that should take place, you know, closer to to, to rookie uh, minicamp or something like that. And I feel like the Bears knew about this, you know. So going back to the Lucas Patrick um free agent signing he comes from a good uh, pedigree is NFL wise playing with Green Bay uh, 
you know, anytime you get a player from a successful team that contributed uh, a good amount of time uh, to the team's success, you want to see what they're doing and, and bring that on your team, especially if you've been getting beat by them repeatedly. You know, so when you bring a guy like Lucas Patrick on your team, he knows what success looks like. Um, he's going to be able to, you know, hopefully have some of that rub off on the players around us as far as setting a standard for how to practice, how to study, and how to play ball on Sunday. So I gave that a B plus. Um, Nicholas Morrow gave that a B because uh, it was an area of need as well. You need, you need a guy that's experienced in the NFL in the 4-3 scheme. I gave it a B because of his athletic ability and um, and because he's a hitter. Uh, I couldn't give him an A. I didn't think he... I think the, the B came out of what I think he's going to be. And I think that he'll be one of our better linebackers playing on side of Roquan Smith. Um, I worry about his size a little bit, you know. You know, I worry about his uh, his health a little bit. And I worry about consistency, you know, as far as being able to stay on the field for 16 games, be impactful, and uh, and also, you know, not have games where you where where you, you do really good and uh, you know, we see you get an interception, a sack, a couple tackles for loss. Um, assist on tackles, things like that. And then the next game, you're letting tight ends run all over you in the secondary. You're letting uh, guards get to you and, and, and running lanes are opening up like the Red Sea. You know, so those are things that I haven't really observed and I want to see how consistent his ball is. But I think it's going to be pretty consistent uh, on the side of Roquan Smith. Uh, I think that's going to be a great matchup. Uh, two guys with a lot of speed at, at the second level. You know, the Bears are going to be pretty dangerous as far as, like, taking away the flats, taking away things over the middle. Um, we just got to see what this defensive line is going to look like and how aggressive and how much chaos they're going to cause. That's going to be a big part of it. So, again, Nicholas Morrow, I gave that a B. So, so far, we got Justin Jones, B-. minus. Lucas Patrick, B+, plus. Nicholas Morrow, a B. Um, Byron Pringle, I gave that an A. I gave it an A. I didn't give it an A+, plus. I just gave it an A. Again, you know, as far as coming from a team that's been successful, playing with a good quarterback, just as Lucas Patrick, Lucas Patrick played in front of a good quarterback, you have uh, Byron Pringle playing with a good quarterback. And... Um, I said before, like in uh, when we, we first signed them, that you know there's a lot of competition out there in, in Kansas City. It was going to be real difficult, difficult for him to break into that starting lineup. But I think the fact that he did get um, a lot of touches, he was targeted. You know, I think that he was just unable to um, to really take advantage where your number one receiver is Tyreek Hill, and and he, that's a bad man. He gets open, and you can hit him in, in, in shorter, eat him intermediate routes as well, and, and he'll still score a touchdown. Not a lot of people could do that. So you're always going to have him be your number one target, more than your running back, more than your tight end. And then not to mention, you got Kelsey out there as well. So it's a lot of competition uh, to catch balls out there, a lot of guys with big contracts out there. You feel me? So, yeah, Byron Pringle was getting a lot of crumbs off the table. And I think he did uh, the best he could with it. Those are pretty decent stats to be the third option in the passing game, if you were the third option, because there's always Hardman, too. So, yeah, I think I think that uh, given more responsibility, uh, Byron Pringle, uh, we could have 2,000-yard receivers, you know, um, this season. You know, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how he could draw coverage away from Mooney, how Mooney could draw coverage away from him. And just seeing how the passing game develops, I think that Justin Fields will take a step up. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Definitely like the signing. Signing. You know, if we were able to get someone like uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, someone with a lot of playing time, if we were able to get DJ Chart, um, somebody like that. It might have been a um, A plus or something like that. You feel me? But uh, love the signing of Pringle. Um, 
Equinemius St. Brown, I gave that a C plus. You know, he comes from a good team. Um, he got he has really good size. I think he has potential. And he was a guy that was in a position again where it's a lot of competition for the ball out there. You know, you're playing with Devontae Adams. You got uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers' best friend uh, Cobb out there. You got uh, MVS out there. So it's a, it's a lot of stuff that that he had to compete with, you know. And I, I really think that after you looked at some of his uh, college tape, you know, you you would think he has more to offer because he, he looks like a pretty fast guy, a uh, wide receiver that'll go up there and get the ball. Uh, he can have some uh, run after catch. So I still think he has the tools. I don't think he's had a lot of opportunities to show him. And, you know, this guy's C plus plays special teams. I see that being his role. But I could also see him out there uh, catching a couple of touchdowns this season, uh, making some catches in big play situations. And if if this is going to be better than a C plus, you know, which I'm not predicting, but I could see it being a you know a B player. I could see him developing into a a, a three or four wide receiver, strictly just because of his size. You know, there's going to be situations you want to want your six foot four guy out there, red zone situations. You know. Uh, we're trying to get a first down don't have that many yards to go we're going to throw it up to this guy you know they're stacking the box stuff like that you know so I see his size keeping him in the NFL for a little while it's going to be up to him to take advantage of those situations uh, we got uh, we signed a fullback y'all Kari blasting game um, you know I don't know how they're going to use him but a lot of the film I've seen he was catching balls out the backfield and you know <clears throat> take you know take him a nice little distance i think that uh being a a run blocker for uh derrick henry as well you know i think that isn't going to do anything but you know help out david montgomery and uh you know just throwing the defense off a little bit you know and uh because they're going to see Kari blasting game in there they're going to see uh david montgomery or khalil herbert uh with him in the backfield and, you know, sometimes you might not be running the ball. Sometimes you might be flaring them, running backs out, and just picking who's open and to take it wherever they got to take it to. But, you know, I think uh, the addition of a fullback, I, although people say it's outdated, I just believe that uh, there's so much more you could do when you add um, uh, different pieces to your offense that the defense is going to have to respect and scheme it for. The other guy I like is Al Qadeen Muhammad. Now, he's a defensive end. He came from the Eagle Flu system in Indianapolis. And, you know, I like this tape. I definitely love his explosion, his relentlessness uh, towards the quarterback. Um, you know, he takes really nice angles uh, and pathways to the quarterback. He has a lot of good bend in his hips. Uh, you know, I think that's a really good pickup. And I give that an A+. Plus. I'm really excited to see um, these guys play together, uh, see how Justin Jones takes on the double team. Uh, I think Kyrus Tonga will be a starter. And so, I'll, you know, having them two guys in the middle, I can see this guy having a great season uh, in his first year with the Bears. To wrap things up with uh, the free agency, uh, we're going to talk about the Larry Ogan, Joe B signing, not signing failing the uh, team physical fiasco all right so again i've said this before my my opinion about that is that when the bears had let out the news pressings and the announcement that they were going to be signing larry young and joby they hadn't sat down with him in person uh they hadn't had a, t a chance to get him into the building or the facility whatever you want to call it and um I think during that time, man, I think Poles looked at that tape. I think Poles looked at the tape just to see what he was really getting. Now, if you look at the stats, yeah, you're going to tip your hat to the guy. But if you look at the tape, what you're going to find is a player that had some flash plays. But in between that, you're going to see somebody that just didn't do so hot. You know, it's just me, me, me being honest about it. You know, I'm not saying I'm a... Bill Belichick, I'm not saying I'm the greatest scout in the world, but what I am saying is I know what I'm looking at when I'm when you're talking about what's going on in the trenches. Okay? And this wasn't 
an impressive uh, showing. It's way more, I've seen way more dominant interior linemen. So we'll leave it there. So I think Ryan Poles looked at the tape, considered what he offered him over the phone, and um, did what he had to do to kind of back out of that deal. I think like if the, uh, the Bears end up signing Larry o- Ogunjobi, it'll be for something less than $40 million. You believe that. But I think that was just a move to get out of a bad decision. And I, I, I have to respect Ryan Poles for seeing the same things that I've seen. Definitely. So I gave that a, a, a B plus because I guess, you know, that was his first signing. And, you know, I guess had we had him, we would have been happy about it. We, we wouldn't have Justin Jones. We wouldn't be thinking about what we were really getting unless we went and looked at the tape. And I don't think any of us really would have did that. Because a lot of the people in the media, uh, they love Larry Ogunjobi. Go look at the tape first before you jump out there and have to, you know, bring back some of your statements, you know. So we would have believed what they were saying in the media. We would have just took their word for it. And it's not just people in the media. It's, it's players that are uh, that are trying to make fans see something that we can see clearly trying to explain how he's a good player when we've seen good interior linemen already and what they look like. Now, some of us may have played football before. Some of us may have not played football before. But either way it goes, I've played, and I know when I see a good defensive lineman, he's okay. He's not trash. I'm not saying that. $40 million, though, it means you're dominant. And that's just not what I saw, okay? So I gave it a B plus, and I shouldn't have given it a B plus. Just kind of the situation, you know, area of need, even though we didn't even need him at the time, because we probably, if, if, if we talked to some of those veterans, we might have been able to get uh, Bilal Nichols, which would be a better player than Justin Jones and Larry Ogunjobi, in my opinion. Be a great three technique. He was actually playing out of position in the 3 4. He's a real three technique, you know? So, they had him playing those, and then they had to go to the 4 3 just to take advantage of his ability because they knew how good he could be in the 4 3. Whatever, whatever. Moving right along, you know, as free agency moves on, top areas of need, I still think they need one more offensive lineman. Um, next, we probably could use a, a really good number one wide receiver or somebody that could fill that role as a number one. Uh, not forcing Mooney into that number one role. I still think he needs one more year to compete for the ball um, and put those numbers up to prove he could be a number one receiver and not just a a guy with uh, speed and potential. You know, being a number one receiver means that you dominate every game. You're going to get five to uh, to eight catches. You're going to get at the least five to five catches. That's on a bad day. You know, average day, eight to ten. Great day, ten to, 10 to maybe 15, you know, great game. So, you know, definitely need some wide receiver help. After wide receivers, I think we need uh, a solid cornerback, somebody with experience. You know, I like Thomas Graham Jr. Um, but if we could bring in one more cornerback, that we could feel confident with, you know, we could figure out who we're going to have play in the slot, you know. That's where we're at with it. We need to find somebody to play in the slot because Thomas Graham Jr. showed me some things last season that I really was liking. I thought he should have played a little bit more, you know, uh, than he did, but we don't know what happened with that. But what I did see last season was a guy with potential, and I feel like I wish he had more playing time. Uh, to see where he'd be by the end of the season. So I like Thomas Graham Jr. at that on, on the other side of uh, Jalen Johnson. I think we need that nickel corner or we need a corner that's better than either one of those guys and kick one of them guys to nickel. And I think we are pretty decent in our secondary. We still have e Jack, and I think that, you know, he's another guy that I think that uh, kind of lost inspiration over time with the Chicago Bears. I don't know. If, they're, if the Bears are going to keep him or if they're going to use him as trade bait or if they still see something that, um, you know, they could revive Eddie Jackson, you know. So 
hopefully Eddie Jackson can step up uh, this year and, um, you know, turn back the hands of time for that 2018 form. And we need some safety help, you know, so um, strong safety help at that. So that's 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 where we're at when it comes to team needs. Um, 2020 uh, players that were on the team in 2021 uh, should, who should really, uh, you know, become like core pieces on our team, leaders. I'm looking at Justin Fields on offense. I think that he's going to make a big leap this year. Um, the things that Matt Nagy needed to do with him in his rookie season, he's going to get all of that this year. I love Luke Getze. Uh, you know, just looking at his interviews and listening to some of the things that people say about him. You know, I think he's going to take Justin Fields from square one. He's going to tell him, forget everything Nagy taught you. you go back to the basics. We'll clean a couple things up. We're going to see what you do good. And we're going to do that a lot. And we're going to work on what you don't do uh, that well. And we're, and we're going to work on it until those skills come up and we can start adding different little pieces on to your, to your, uh, to your game and to the offense. So I think that's the piece that Matt Nagy misses, teaching the basics. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Kyrus Tonga. You know, with Akeem Hicks, with uh, Bilal Nichols, uh, with some of the other free agents that they brought in. I think Kyrus Tonga is going to be a guy that's going to make a lot of plays for us at that nose tackle position, that one technique, uh, you know, that cocked uh, nose tackle position. You know, got a lot of respect for them boys down there in the trenches, man. I think Thomas Graham is going to have a good season this year. You know, of course, cornerbacks get beat from time to time. But uh, from what I seen last season, he's going to make some plays for us too. So I look at, uh, at uh, Thomas Graham like a guy who's going to be a good contributor. I think he's going to be starter next season. Eddie Jackson, I look for this to be his comeback season. I think he's been trying to come back all this time, but I just think um, with the coaching that they had, with the changes in the defensive coordinators, you know, he's a human being. And I think just sometimes you lose inspiration uh, when things aren't going right. But I think that as he matures as an NFL player, you know, if he gets around the right guys in the offseason, I think he'll get that back. I think seeing some of the uh, some of the guys he looked up to uh, leave the team the way they did might be a reality check as well. So I think this year, you know, he'll probably be putting his best foot forward. And lastly, I think Darnell Mooney is going to have a breakout season. Um, you know, I think he works hard. I think he's down there with Justin Fields right now, and uh, they're developing rapport with each other, and that's only going to be a positive thing, you know, going into the season. I'm sure Justin Fields is uh, getting some assignments from Luke Getze on what he needs to work on. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing more touchdowns in the passing game, more touchdowns in the red zone. I mean, just more touchdowns in general. We're like one of the, the, the lowest scoring offenses in the NFL. That's it's not good, guys. But, um... You already know what it is, man. Fourth quarter boy sports. It's me, the illustrious one, Professor Lake, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Be a fourth quarter boy for life, man. For life. Hit that notification icon, man. You're notified every time I flip a video out, man. One.